church we sing? I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. Welcome to the Village Chapel Friday Night Chats. We've been doing this for a few months now. We uh, visited with Oz Guinness last time and uh, Sam Albury, and we're going to have several coming up in the next few months. You want to stay with us. But tonight, our guest happens to be my next door neighbor. <laughs> and if you were walking in our neighborhood and happened to walk by our courtyard, you would probably hear the sounds of lemonade playing over our speakers which is one of Charlie Peacock's wonderful instrumental albums. And I know that while I'm listening to his music, he's likely over on this side in this garage, upstairs, making something wonderful. In fact, let's talk to him about it. Hey, Chuck. Hello. Good <laughs> evening to you. Neighbor. Neighbor. This is hilarious that we end up 10 steps away from each other after all these years. Yeah, yeah. very short commute to work. <laughs> well, Chuck is, uh, if you're not familiar with his work, uh, he's really a legend in uh, creative ways, especially in the music industry. He's um, a singer, a songwriter, a pianist, a record producer, a session musician, an author. And now what I'm excited to talk to him about tonight is he's a visual artist as well. So this is a whole new thing. How, Charlie, is it um, for you making visual art as compared mm -hmm. to making s music? Yeah. Well, I think the first thing to say about it is that it functions in my life differently and that um, I have making, which is, you know, making music, which is my vocation. And... I can let this be sort of in the realm of avocation. You know? Right. I mean, yeah. it may be more, you know, move, move more towards um, something that I, I really spend, you know, 50% of my time on. But, uh, but for right now, it's, it's kind of like a, a uh, it slows me down. It gives me sort mm. of a, a meditation. It, it reminds me a lot of when I uh, f used to fly fish. Oh. And it reminds me of uh, just being out on the stream and like hours just going by and, you know, yeah. you're just not conscious of it. You're, you're just really happy and feel like you're in the right yeah. place. Yeah. And I, and I have to say, I mean, I have that a lot with music. Yeah. But it's just the, the weight of, I mean, this next year I'll celebrate being a working musician for 50 years. Yeah, except that you're not old enough for that. <laughs> yeah, I know. The math doesn't work. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, you can't, you can't take that away. That is right. what it is. It yes. has its, its whole weight of story, yes. you know, around it. Whereas um, circling back around, you know, 50 years later and um, making art um, has just been, yeah, it's been an incredible pleasure. How is it similar to making music? Well, the similarities um, for me are really not just about painting, not just about visual arts or just about music. It's more about the way artists uh, perceive the world and 
how they work and what their tools right. are. And, you know, there's just things that I don't think most people would understand immediately that, you know, you and I might be thinking about dimensionality. We yeah. might be thinking about texture. We might be thinking about what is hidden and what is seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I could make a long, long list of the way artists think about the world right. and how they yeah. do their work. And so that's the foundation. Right. I, mean, I mean, that's kind of what has allowed me to do a lot of things in my lifetime, right. you know, uh, because I could bring that to everything I was doing. And then it might require me to, to gain some technique or skill, ability to actually execute it. Right. But the, the ideas about what it means to be an artist in the world were front-loaded into uh, what I was attempting to do. And, it's this, and it has become the same thing with visual arts. So it's just some different tools, though. <clears throat> yeah, it's entirely different tools. But um, it's sort of you extrapolate outward from a, an existing tool in another medium Right mm -hmm. to get to another tool who do, that does something similar. Right in yeah. a new medium. Yeah. Yeah, but instead of pushing tiles or however it's done these yeah. days, you're pushing brushes. Mm -hmm. And so, what are what are some of your favorite tools that you're using in the studio um, for your visual art? Well, I do use brushes. I mean, <laughs> you know, like you, I have you know a, a whole a whole number of brushes. Do you have one? Though? Uh, you have one that's like, uh, that's the baby. No, I do have my favorite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I also use rags a lot. Yes. And I, I've created some uh, tools that I, maybe I can show them to you yeah. later. Um, just some of my own things that I use to, because one of the things that I do with visual art is I, I play with uh, randomness and uh, mixed with intentionality. Yeah. And then once I cast that, then uh, the organizational mind comes to bear upon that. I organize it, and then the artistic mind mm -hmm. asks the question, is it good? That's the producer in you. You no. are a producer. Yeah. You pull together the various parts and allow them to be the best of what they are. Yeah and then put the package together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's exactly it. I mean, for years, that's, you know, that's what I was hired to do with artists is, is to find the essential narrative, to find yes. that thing that makes them uh, unique and to also assess the weaknesses and, and sort of push all the positive forward and, and all of the weaknesses kind of under the rug, you know. Do you, do you think these two are feeding each other, your, your music Oof. and then your visual art and your visual art? And are, they, are they talking to each other? Are they feeding the, the overall yeah. creative No, river? I think they really are talking to each other. Um, in the same way when I, um, you know, 20 years ago when I started writing books, mm -hmm. um, there were things about music um, that allowed me to, to even accomplish writing a book because um, there's a real, uh, a part of being an artist is, is delaying gratification. Right. Okay. And, um, and not finishing too soon. Right. right? Uh huh. Uh, and so, you know, it takes a long time. As you know, <laughs> you've written books, so you know, they, you know how hard they are to write, yes. you know, so you're really delaying gratification yeah. with the book. <laughs> So, so even just things like patience. I mean, patience is a tool. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, and I, to me, I've often told people that that the patience for me comes from uh, growing up in a in a farm community. Huh. Um, because Expand. yeah, I mean, you have uh, you know you're working with soil and and water and seed, and uh, and then you're waiting. Yes. You're that makes waiting great sense. and waiting and waiting. Yes, yes. Right? And then you harvest, you know, and you yeah. hope the harvest is good. But <laughs> but there is this long period where you you don't really know what you're going to get yet. 
Right. You know, are you going to get a crop of small peaches this year with a lot of brown rot? You know, <laughs> or are you going to get big, beautiful peaches that, you know, you can sell 85% of them at the highest rate possible? <laughs> you know, you don't know yet. And I think... That's th part th of what you love. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the difference between farming and art is, is that when we get to that point and we go like, oh, it wasn't that good of a, of a crop, yeah. we have tools to adjust mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. and to come back at the work and start to tinker some more and get it to a place either to, to the point where we can say, this is good. Yes. I'm okay where it is. And, and if it isn't, we don't let anybody see it or hear it or yeah. uh -huh. read it, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you know of uh, Rainer Maria Rilke, a poet? I mm -hmm. love, uh, you were talking about the farm thing. He's, he talks about, as a writer or a creator, do you know, by the way, he was the amanuensis for um, Rodin. No, the I sculptor. Know that. Isn't that bizarre? I thought yeah. this is so funny. Two of my very favorite yeah. artists. Well, I know. T I mean, Tom Willett has always quoted him. Oh, Rilke? Yeah. 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 He's always been one of my favorites. But he said about art you have to wait for it to come. Mm -hmm. And it's like a tree. Yeah. And you must trust that the sap will come every year, but it will be in its time. Yeah. Exactly. And I love that about yeah. painting and about all the art that we yeah. do and yeah. that joyful moment when you go, yes, it's done. Yeah. And then all that time where you're going, is it done? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't tell yet. How do you, how do you know when your painting is done? Um, because you work in sort of an abstract expressionism. or Yeah, yeah. So for me, um, my music, career has been a combination of being a part of American music, uh, American popular music, and have, gaining skill and ability in all of these different genres that are about American music, right. you know. Um, and so while I was doing that, gaining that skill and ability, I had this impulse to um, make something different. Yeah. Make something that hadn't been done before. Right. So I look at my whole music career as this combination of familiarity, sure. right? And then uh, the things that for me, I feel like, okay, I haven't heard that before. Yeah. I haven't seen that before. So um, the artwork is exactly the same, you know? I mean, I have no problem making something that is just hideous. <laughs> You know, if it's one step towards getting something that yeah. I feel is unique and I can say that's done. At the end of the day, I know I, I try to leave low-hanging fruit in the studio. So the next day I come in, I don't have to think about what the next step is. Mm -hmm. I've already made it because if I do it at that point, there's always one brush stroke too many. You're exactly right. Yeah, yeah. I, that's that was. I think when I started painting two years ago, that was the the hardest thing to learn. Yeah. To and, and if, the funny thing was is that it was. It, it, it's kind of like um, uh, it, when you know you shouldn't do something <laughs> <laughs> in anything <laughs> in life, no, no, and no. that voice tells you. Don't do that. That's right. <laughs> right? right. And it's the same with painting. You'll 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 go. Ah, oh, I hate that. I gotta fix that. And then the moment you fix it, you realize that you ruined it again. I know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But it's it's such a it's such a great adventure because yeah. yeah. sometimes it works out that way. Yeah. Okay. I, I have a switch of kind mm -hmm. of topic for you. Um, several years back, you did an interview with me, and you asked me to name five words that describe me as a creative artist or mm. that, that describe my work. Mm -hmm. you, can, you get up to five. If you get three, you win a bonus prize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, yeah, the first, I think the first word uh, is that it has to be imaginative. Ah. It can't just be creative. Mm -hmm. That I'm actually more fascinated by the imagination. 
uh -huh. um, that I am um, creativity. Right. Um, because creativity is the fruit of the imagination. And uh -huh. it's an interesting thing that you can be creative and not imaginative, right? Yeah. But, but you know, yeah. if you really want the real thing, you've got to lean into the imagination. Oh, yeah. And so I hope that would be said about me is that I would be imaginative. That's what I've tried, tried to do. Um, another thing I've tried to do is be completely transparent and honest, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in, uh, in writing lyrics. Yeah. You know? um, and then third, I would say um, it would be failure. I guess would be a word I would use. Wow. Uh, okay. We yeah. haven't seen those. Um, because I, you know, it's it's sort of like that saying is like anything worth doing is worth failing at, you know. Mm. Um, and so many of the things that have meant so much to me in my life, uh, musically and personally, have come out of failures. They've come out mm -hmm. of the, the redemption that emerges out of the mm -hmm. failure. Um, oh, I like so that. I, I try not to be uh, afraid of that. And then the other thing would be, um, I would say I am fearless as an artist. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think I would say that with confidence. Um, if I believe that I'm doing the right thing, and, and in particular as, a, as someone who professes to follow Christ, if I think... I'm on mission, mm -hmm. you know. It it does not matter to me one bit whether it produces compensation that the world admires. Right. You know? It it just matter. It it just I can't even ex I can't stress how much it doesn't matter to me. That fearlessness is what's <laughs> so good because you're not self-editing. You're giving yourself that thing that children have, yeah. which is, I'm going to draw a tree. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. They don't yeah. wait and go, wait a minute now, is this which a peach tree or an evergreen? Yeah. And they don't have all that stuff. Yeah. And so your fearlessness probably accesses your creativity and your imagination. Yeah, I just, I just think that fear is a, is a you know, imagination killer, creativity killer. Um, so that's four. <laughs> that's four. I'll give you. I'll give you a pass on the fifth right. because I want to hit you on a couple of other things. Um, how does family influence your visual art? I'm like I know about this painting behind me. There's a, a great family story, but yeah, that, I know you, so I know that family is a part of pretty much everything. Yes. Um, well, interestingly enough, of these these paintings that are right here. Um, th this is three eyeglasses with a hexagonal lattice of balls. Oh, wow. And, and this eye over here is my daughter, Molly. Oh. The glasses in the middle are my grandson, Robert. The glass uh -huh. that you can see just see a little it. bit over there is, is Father Mark, my son-in-law. Oh, I love it. Um, and two of my grandkids are in that tug of war. That was that was uh, inspired by a birthday party. I love um, that. Yeah. So so there's a little bit of, uh, you know, I mean, you've seen a lot of what I've done. I mean, there's mm -hmm. there's um, there's narrative when mm -hmm. it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. I don't feel I have to have it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. But if it makes sense to me, you know, like there's a piece in the house that that's called 1897, and it's about um, the murder of my great grandfather. Yeah. yeah. And so it it's uh, you know it's very personal. It's dark, yeah. <laughs> foreboding as is, yeah. as murder should be. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, um, yeah. So kind of. Yeah, it runs the spectrum from something like that uh, to something really bright and and light. I mean, that's mm. why that these uh, paintings have that kind of vibrancy to them, you know, because yeah, they represent <clears throat> that in my life. Yeah. Okay, so this is it. Kind of leads along to this next thing. 
Our friend Mako Fujimura, mm -hmm. he has uh, written that form and content must interdependently grow into fullness. Mm -hmm. Because if form is made subject to message, yeah. then the attempt to witness to whatever it is yeah. becomes blurred. Yeah. So how does faith influence your visual work? Yeah. Um, well, well, first, I, I mean, I completely agree with Mako on that. So mm -hmm. um, we are in sync there. Um, for me, as, as somebody who, who's followed Christ for almost 40 years now, um, I have always lived by uh, the concept that I am completely and totally free in grace. Mm. And so I can merge these, you know, seamlessly integrate, like yes. what Mako is suggesting, seamlessly integrate. Uh, and not think about form, uh, get obsessed with it, not think about content, get obsessed mm -hmm. with it, but let things sort of naturally flow out of um, not just your life in terms of individualism, right. but your community, your family, your spouse, children, grandchildren, uh, all of these human interactions that it can flow out of that and that is the that's the basis for me do you <clears throat> i when i'm in the studio oftentimes as you say it, it's calming mm -hmm. you, you do have to slow down yeah um but your senses um I, I, like i try to have something like instrumental music so i'm not listening to words so mm -hmm. i don't have that part of my brain engaged but because of that, I might be mixing paint, I might be washing brushes, but there is almost a, a liturgical, meditational um, thing that happens where I can really commune with the Lord in those quiet, mm -hmm. repeated yeah. uh, practices. Do you have some, does it ever hit you that way when you're painting? Do you have that sort of sense? <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's it's probably at this point it's it's not as defined. I I've always been a person who who prays um, about the work that I'm yeah. doing. You yeah. Know, so that um, I don't want to I don't want to waste the time that God has given me doing something that I'm not supposed to be doing. So that. <clears throat> That'll send you to the studio. You know, so I, I, um, I feel like I have a, a very privileged life, you know, and so mm -hmm. there's a responsibility with that, and um, I try to be prayerful and make good use of my time. So tell me this, with all the creative aspects that you have in, in your visual art, what are you making, creating, that you are most excited about? Mm. I know you've been experimental, which is something I really <laughs> yeah. admire about you. Yeah. You just go, well, I saw this, I thought I'd try it, and you go after yeah. it. <clears throat> yeah. Well, um, I would say the thing that I'm most excited about now uh, is a technique that I've developed uh, that will be in the show that's coming up here. That's right. Uh, very um, shortly. That uh, we'll have yeah. Charlie's work on an online yeah. gallery yeah. that you'll be able to see. Yeah. So, so <laughs> people will be able to see this technique, you know, at that time. I mean, there'll, there'll be a lot of pieces of, of art based on this, but it is a technique that involves uh, acrylic painting on canvas and eight millimeter film and uh, <laughs> digital photography. Um, and I'm just, it, the first time I did it, even though it was so primitive, right? I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm oh, on to yeah. something here. Yes. <laughs> you know? oh. and, and got really excited about it. So I set about, instead of continuing to experiment, I set about figuring out how to improve that one thing Ah. that I was doing because up to then I was just sort of like okay here's one big experiment 
and here's another big experiment. And they, yeah. they don't look like each other at all. They don't belong in the same family. And here's another big experiment, <laughs> right. Yeah. right? Because I was like that, you know, little boy in the sandbox you're, yeah. you were describing. I, I was just playing, yeah. you know. And uh, so when I f fell upon this, um, this combination of, of uh, medium uh, and source material, mm -hmm. and it, it would just... It felt so emotional and mm. uh, and really deeply spiritual. It was like I felt like uh, images got uh, transformed into something that uh, w that was beyond my ability, you know, beyond my clever thinking. Yes. And I've had a number of musical um, times in my life where I've experienced that and they've just been, I mean, I've, I've literally just broke down crying mm -hmm. to have uh, times when you just know, like, you know, I just got to make music where I completely stopped thinking about myself. Uh, yes. And, uh, and, you know, I can say that it, it just never would have happened without uh, God's grace. You know? And I feel the same way about this new, uh, I, I can't wait to share it with everybody. It's beautiful. <clears throat> it gives, uh, it's such a unique thing that you're lost in looking at it from not, try, not trying to figure out how do you do that. You just get lost in the images and mm -hmm. uh, the subtle unspoken narratives. Yeah. I want to ask you, um, let's see, in 2012, you were asked what you would say to developing songwriters. And mm -hmm. you said, if you want to be a great songwriter, you have to be like a toothpick maker. Yeah. You've got to make a lot of them to yeah. succeed at it. Yeah. So how's the tooth yeah. making, the toothpick yeah. making? <laughs> well, for me, it's been great. I mean, the, the last uh, three and a half years, I've written more music than... I, I did the two decades before that, you something. know, I mean, I, I think I've written something like 250 songs and produced 250 songs um, over the last few years while, you know, developing uh, this visual arts as well. I think you and are I, so incredibly fruitful in your studio. You, you are in here, you keep going, and you are making uh, so many toothpicks. This, yes, <laughs> because I'm living, you know, by my, my own, uh, my own proverb, That's right. I guess. That's right. And it's true, right? Yeah. Isn't oh, it? Oh, it really is. I mean, certainly, you know, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm a person who's developed a, you know, university curriculum for oh, learning yes, how, learning, learning how to write songs, yeah. right? Yeah. But if you don't, you know, go to a music school, yeah, uh, like like I didn't, you know, yeah. I mean, I had tr some training, but I didn't, I didn't last in it because I started working so young. But um, the way that you learn to write songs is by writing songs, right? And I, uh, another illustration that I've used a lot, along with the toothpicks, is that. <laughs> The songs are like stones that you step on to get across mm. the river. Mm. You know, it keeps you moving and eventually you reach land. Right. <laughs> you know? yes. And from that point on, um, you know, you, you've gained enough tools in your songwriter toolbox uh, to show up for the work. Right. Mm -hmm. Doesn't guarantee that it's going to be, mm -hmm. you know, great all the time, but right. but you certainly can sit down and write a song. And paint a painting. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> As I was thinking so much about how you have uh, learned the process of creativity, um, I think mm -hmm. some people think um, that you just go to your studio and there's a canvas, the muse hits, and boom. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about the fact that there's a discipline to it. And especially yeah. uniquely so when you're painting an abstract expressionist, yeah. you don't always have 
a sketch you're starting with. Right. Yeah. It reveals itself exactly. as you go. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That that kind of painting, uh, in terms of abstract expressionism, uh, I like it because it does closely resemble jazz. I was thinking the same thing. And that that improvisation yeah, is what you do. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like uh, every stroke deserves a call, you know, sort of what, what is the call and then what's the response. Oh, yes. You know, and, um, you know, in jazz, I mean, j jazz, there's a, I always joke about, you know, there's there's no wrong notes. It just depends <laughs> on how long you stay rested <laughs> on that note, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so if you pivot, you know, a half step away, um, you know, and you do it as a 16th note, then, you know, nobody's <laughs> going to say that was a bad note. Boy, it was a courageous note. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything's permissible. Yeah. Well, as we're kind of tying this uh, together, I was looking at some of your catalog, and I've been a fan for years of your music. I've always loved it and now a fan to be next door to you mm. as you're in your studio and developing your visual art. I'm just, I'm such a fan, but I'm such, um, I'm so motivated by you. And mm. that you. to find, um, okay, you and I are not 20. Right. We do happen to be in that six decade mm -hmm. and find something new that motivates you. Yeah. And in 1999, a couple of songs, um, you were way ahead of Elsa and Frozen. <laughs> Your song, Don't Be Afraid, let yeah. it go, let it go, let yeah. them all go. <laughs> Every go. fear that you hold too tight, yeah. don't be afraid to be a Van Gogh. Yeah. And that's almost 20, well, what, uh, 10, 1999, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here you are now saying to your own self again, don't yeah. be afraid yeah. be a, to be a Van Gogh. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think for me, you just cannot be an artist and not deal with your fear. I mean, yeah. you, you, you know, you could. I, I suppose you could be an artist and just be fearful every day and struggle with it, you know, and yes. try to overcome it. Um, but I just really do believe strongly that the best artists are the best at failing mm. and, mm. and it being okay. I uh, think that's the thing. It's like, no big deal. There's you know? another canvas. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's, the there's another are, day, are precious, there's another canvas. So what did you learn from it, you know? Yes. Or, or is there enough left? It's kind of like that Annie Dillard quote mm. about writing where, you know, sometimes you have to tear the house down yeah. all the way down to yes. the foundation, yes. right? Uh -huh. And and build again. Right. And um, I think you get the confidence. I mean, I totally get it. You know, if there's a 20 year old, right, mm -hmm. who's fearful, like, I don't know if this is any good. Right. Are people going to like it? All of that kind of stuff. But when you gain skill and ability, and like, like for me, I mean, I've been writing songs for 50 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I better be good at it <laughs> at this point. At this point. Oh, that's a lot of right? teeth fixed. So if my song house has to be torn down to the foundation, uh -huh. I'm also the person who knows how to put it back together. Yes. Oh. Right? Because that's just come with all of this experience and and that's one of the reasons why I wouldn't be fearful mm -hmm. you know and I th I would hope that for all artists at some point particularly if if you profess to follow Christ mm -hmm. I really really believe that the glorious freedom of the children of God must travel with you mm -hmm. as an artist mm -hmm. and be a part of everything that you do that you have that freedom before Jesus uh, you don't have to impress Jesus. You don't have to use religious language. Right. You don't have to do anything other than say, look what I made. Yes. And thank you. I love that. I think when I <clears throat> most became free in pursuing the arts and doing that type of thing, uh, Abraham Kuyper, a quote he has about, you know, there's not one square inch in all of creation over which Jesus does not say that's mine. Yeah. And the arts in every aspect, I think some people sometimes don't feel the freedom 
as a Christian, well, I could, should I be out and serving the poor? Yeah. Well, yeah, but if you're an artist, you should also be making your art. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 they're not mutually exclusive. They're actually a part of a whole. Uh, and mm -hmm. To have a holistic Christian life, uh, at least for me and my family, means that uh, we're spending time in in all of those areas. Right. You know, we're and we're spending resources right. on all of these areas. You know, so we're not we're not beating ourselves up about you know are we doing enough for the yes. poor. Yes. Um, yes, we are doing something, but we're also doing this because we're yes. called to this and we're called to that and and also ultimately. What you must accept is that you're just one small, tiny person mm. occupying one small, tiny piece of history. Love that. And, that, and that should free you up, mm -hmm. you know. Um, that and grace, yeah. Should, I think that's wonderful. And I love um, failure uh, and uh, fearlessness. I like the idea of creating out of that more than out of anger and I hate everything. And you know, sometimes yeah. we do, sometimes yeah. we do. But yeah. as a believer, I do love the thought from Philippians that um, think on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely. Yes. And the peace of God will guard your heart. Yes. And then of course, in the scripture, it says the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. Mm -hmm. And I think as we have this wonderfully full, balanced spiritual life and involvement in uh, a holistic life, yeah. then our, our heart is full of true and beautiful and honest and right and pure things yeah, to true. resource. Yeah, filled with all kinds of stories. Uh, it's like when songwriters say to me, how do you know what to write about? I, and, and my answer is like, how can you not write yeah. about <laughs> everything? It's like the whole world is your topic. I can hardly wait to get back in my studio. Okay, so just a couple questions to wind this wonderful time up. One, of course we need to know, do you listen to music when you paint? I do, I do. I have to listen to um, something that isn't too busy though. Yeah. You know, so I'll, I'll often, often listen to uh, a jazz pianist, but it can't um, it can't get too atonal or too uh, too busy rhythmically. Right. You know, otherwise my my mind goes over there. So I'll listen to like uh, Bill Evans is a great yes. choice for me. Uh -huh. You know, to just to list. Yeah, I listen to a lot of Bill Evans. I find um, it can't be something I know. Mm because then it distracts me and I'm singing or yeah, I'm thinking yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And this is kind of hilarious, but I've listened a lot of times to Asian music, mm -hmm. um, just instrumental that is, yeah. it's atonal, it's unexpected, but it's soothing. But just to not distract from the creative side that I'm trying to pay attention. And mm -hmm. Okay, so the very last question. I did mention perhaps that we're over 60. Yes. And um, the fearlessness uh, needs to be there for young artists, especially for young artists. But then for us, too, as we're in our 60s, even not, I don't find as much of the question of fearless because I'm like, yeah, I don't have anything to prove. I just yeah. do what I yeah. want. But perhaps the question that might hit is, am I still relevant? Is there yeah. still a place for my voice or for my work? So yeah. I'm going to quote you from uh, another one of your songs. Okay. I got to wonder, is the brightness still in me? So is the brightness still in you? Yeah, I think it is. I, I do. Uh, especially in the last few years. Um, it's been one of the most productive times of my life as an artist. Um, just working on music and visual arts. And um, I think for me, I, I crossed that bridge of relevance uh -huh. uh, quite a long time ago, you know, uh, because I did come up in a time um, in music where if 
I lived in Northern California, and so for me, music business was in San Francisco and Los Angeles at that time. So there was really a time like you would go to Los Angeles and uh, you know be working on a publishing deal or a record deal or whatever it might be, and you know people would say, well, how you know how old are you? You know, you'd say like I'm 26, and they'd be like, mm. <laughs> you <know? laughs> like fortunately, it's not that bad now. Yeah. But it really was that bad. And so a lot of people of my generation have always lived with that weight of yes. like, you know, uh, is, you know, have I lost too much hair? Have I gained too much weight? Am I 40 now? And nobody's going to, you know, just it's just all of those voices and noise in your life, you know, and. I'm just so glad that I don't have to interact with that. Yes. You know? uh -huh. I'm just really, really glad that I, and honestly, no one should have to interact with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's a, na a natural tendency to yeah. think, you know, is there some place for me? Especially yeah. then when you go into the commercial aspect and the viability yeah. Yeah. and that the next new thing yeah. takes that place. And, I, and, and, you know, I get it, too, because I've, sure. I've functioned, you know, as a senior A&R executive and record company mm. president. And, yeah, I mean, I know how much is invested in artists and, yeah. it, and, and it takes a lot to break an artist. And, and, and they have got to want it and they've, they've got to look the part, you know. So I, I understand it, but I don't really want to be involved in it. And I, and I think that for a person at, at my age, right now it's just about doing good work. It's, that's, I, yes. I mean, it's just yes. really about me being satisfied that I'm doing good work. And, and that's enough. That's how it ought to always be. Yeah, that's enough. Well, thanks, Chuck. I appreciate yeah. it so much. Thank you, neighbor. And I love, I love seeing the midnight uh, lights burning because I know you're in here making something wonderful. Yes. But we thank Charlie for joining us on another Village Chapel Friday Night Chat. And uh, stay tuned. We do have some other ones scheduled in the coming months that I think you'll want to see. But I'm so grateful that uh, at the Village Chapel, we have such a great resource of creative folks, but especially someone I've always admired and been influenced by, my buddy, Charlie Peacock. So, good night, and we'll see you along the way. 